I am officially in preterm labor. Every day we dance and life's been smiling. I'm delighted cause I got you. Hi everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you've ever been here, I'm going to leave a link in my description box to the playlist of all of my pregnancy updates so far so that you can get caught up. In this video, I might be referring to the past several weeks, and if you haven't watched in a while, then I encourage you to check out that playlist and see what's been going on recently. Um, this week, I was in the hospital in labor and delivery with a preterm labor situation going on, and I'm going to share with you my experience with that, how it all turned out, moving forward, what the plan is, that sort of a thing. Uh, but before we talk about that whole crazy situation, I'm going to, just like I do every week, share with you my stats and how the baby is developing this week. The day I turned 33 weeks pregnant, I stepped on the scale and I was 130 pounds, which is awesome. It means I have gained a total of 15 pounds so far in this pregnancy. I still feel like I'm in a good spot as far as my weight gain, the scale keeps moving in the right direction. It keeps going up. My doctor is very happy about that. I measured around the widest part of my tummy and I'm 40 inches around. Pregnancy symptoms just continue to get more magnified as the weeks go on. I've been dealing with some back pain and the rib pain that I talked about in the last couple of updates is definitely better because I feel like this week she has gotten much lower in my body. So in last week's update, I was talking about the fact that um, she was still high in my torso and um, you know, she was really high up and I said in that video, like, I don't think she'll drop for several weeks yet. And, uh, but sure enough, this week, there is a lot of pressure in my pelvis and I can tell that my belly is lower. And actually other people um, have looked at me and said, wow, I really think baby is lower. Like she's dropped, which is the term that people use to talk about baby moving down, getting ready for birth. Something I mentioned in my last update too is that she is head down. Um, I have studied some belly mapping over the past two pregnancies that I've had. Um, one of the sites I really like for information on um, a natural pregnancy and a friend here on YouTube is Mama Natural. You guys should totally check her out. I'm gonna leave her YouTube channel linked as well as her website linked in the description box. Um, she's just kind of like all things natural crunchy motherhood and that sort of a thing. And so I've um, looked into a lot of her resources for this thing called belly mapping. And it's uh, basically a way to tell which position your baby is in. And um, if your baby is not in the right position when it comes time to give birth, how to, you know, do natural techniques to get her to move and that sort of a thing. And I find it very, very interesting. So baby is head down and I have been feeling a lot of pressure on my pelvis and she feels like she's right on my cervix. I've been getting what's called lightning crotch. <laughs> it's not the technical term for it, but that's what it feels like. Um, basically the pressure there and any like hiccups she has or any kicks that she's doing that would press her head up against my cervix. There's a lot of nerves down there and they're kind of connected to everything else down there. And when you get basically head butted by a baby in your cervix, it sends this shock to the nether regions and it can be quite shocking. You like buckle over in pain and it's very momentary. It's not one of those like things that last a long time, like those pains that last a long time, but it is not comfortable, especially when you're in the middle of a grocery store and you just like, oh! <laughs> Everyone looks at you like, help the pregnant lady on aisle six. So other than that, no new symptoms. Uh, I'm gonna talk about these uh, contractions and preterm labor stuff after I talk about how baby is doing here. So um, I always refer to the bump app. I will have a link in the description box of this video. I get requests for the link all the time and I forget to I forget to do that for you guys. But um, this week at 33 weeks, she is the size of a celery stalk. So that is 17 and a half inches, four and a quarter pounds around there. Obviously it can fluctuate from app to app, 
baby to baby, woman to woman, but that's sort of what is kind of the general idea of her size and weight. As far as development goes, it says babies keeping eyes open while awake. Babies also starting to coordinate breathing with sucking and swallowing, and the bones are hardening. <sighs> Speak of the devil, I was just about to talk about having contractions, and here I go, <sighs> having a contraction. I also have another app, it's called the Baby Center app, and that's where I have a contraction counter. Um, and this is something that really came in handy um, on the day that I was having very consistent close together contractions. I'm going to leave a link in the description box to the vlog on my vlogging channel. I have two separate channels um, where I talked about uh, what led up to me going into the hospital. And rather than reiterate all of that right now, I'm gonna send you over to that video if you haven't heard it already. But to sum it up, basically I had a very normal day, actually more on the low key side for me. During lunchtime, I started to feel my contractions, which I've explained that contractions happen to me on a regular basis, maybe once an hour, maybe a couple times an hour, but it's around the clock. And it's been that way since about week 16. It's something my doctor is completely aware of. And if you remember last week's pregnancy update, I mentioned it to him and he said, hey, as soon as something feels different, you know your body, you need to come in if, you know, you sort of go over this threshold where you know something is different than what you've experienced before in this pregnancy. By about the fifth or sixth one, in like a 20 minute period, I started actually like timing them, counting them on this baby center app on my phone. And um, about an hour passed, I had still had contractions between every four and six minutes, lasting about a minute long. I called my doctor's office, spoke with the nurse. She said, go into labor and delivery. This is the threshold, You're, you've crossed it. It's time for you to go in, see what's going on. Was in triage for a little while and they, you know, strapped on the monitors, the baby's heart rate monitor and the contraction monitor. And sure enough, I was having contractions every five minutes. Um, and the contractions were, you know, they were, they looked exactly like contractions normally look on a, you know, on those little toco machines or whatever. And, um, the nurse had to consult with my doctor to see like, should we slow this down? Um, is she hydrated? What's going on? What in her life is making this happen basically? I was not dehydrated. They took urine samples. I had drank like three quarters of a gallon. I drink a lot of water, you guys. So I was not dehydrated, that was not the problem. Um, she talked about uh, my you know, physical activity within the last 24 hours and TMI, warning. They always ask about like, have you had sex in the last 24 hours? And at that point I had, and so there was a certain test that they couldn't conduct because if you've had that sort of activity, the test comes back with sort of a false positive anyway, and so that's kind of moot. It was nothing out of the ordinary. There was no extra stress on my body from like house cleaning and like, uh, you know, exercise or anything that we could point to that would say that is what these contractions are all about. They gave me an oral medication to relax my uterus um, and before she brought it in from the pharmacy, uh, my mom and I were sitting there doing some research. Um, Weston was actually not able to come with me. He was stuck in Seattle. I talked about that in my vlog too. Um, so it was my mom with me at the hospital. I'm so thankful she was there. And we were doing our research about this, looking at the side effects of this particular drug, and I felt comfortable taking it. I thought it was a good first step, um, especially since it had been almost three hours since these contractions started and there was no end in sight. Like, they hadn't slowed down at all. So took the oral medication. It was supposed to kick in within 15 minutes of taking it. Um, and an hour after taking it, I was still having contractions and they were concerned. They suggested taking the shot. Um, I can't remember the name of the medication. They told us the name of the medication and while they were ordering it from the pharmacy, my mom and I did a little bit more research and um, some stuff that it was coming up with was that it causes heart palpitations. I'm someone 
during my pregnancy in the third trimester last time, and I've experienced it this time, I kind of get tachycardic and uh, for no real reason and heart stuff sort of concerns me but the biggest concern for me with taking that injection medication to slow down my contractions or to stall labor or whatever um, was that when the time does come for me to actually be going into labor it can stall things that many weeks later on and I was just not comfortable with that um, as you know I have shared I want to go into labor naturally. I don't want to have an induction. I don't want to have a scheduled C-section. Like I want to do it as naturally as I can. I've experienced a natural drug-free vaginal birth and I've experienced a C-section all within a three hour period. And I know what I prefer. And so I really want to go the natural route. And if getting this injection to stall my labor at 33, almost 33 weeks, would hinder that later on, I didn't feel like it was worth it until I had tried a little bit more to um, figure it out on my own, if that makes sense. And I don't want to sound like I'm like totally anti-medication. Um, I believe I was really gracious and kind to the nurse and to my doctor and they were awesome they just like talked me through it we talked about the different um possibilities of like what could happen and that sort of a thing and i didn't feel like i was making my decision based out of fear i felt like the research that i had done and knowing my own body it just made the most sense to not take that injection and i was sitting there thinking like look i am laying on my back and I asked the nurse, I was like, what's the best position? Like right when I first got there, what's the pe best position for monitoring? And you know, where do you want me? And they put me on my back um, with the monitors on my tummy. And they said, this is the best position to get the most accurate reading. Well, I know that it's great for getting those accurate readings, but it is the worst position for me to stop contractions. I deal with contractions on a regular basis, and if I'm at home, there's no way I'm gonna just lay flat on my back while I'm having contractions. I'm gonna lay on my side, I'm gonna squat down, I'm gonna get on my hands and knees, uh, anything but lay flat on my back. And so I explained this to the nurse and my doctor, and they, said, if that makes a lot of sense, let's give it a shot. They were super gracious about it. It was really awesome. So um, I rolled over to my side. I peed, first of all, because I was staying hydrated. So my bladder was pretty full by the third hour being in the hospital. So I peed. I think that helped things. And I rolled over to my side. They were able to get the monitors on to where they could get an accurate reading. And I just breathed and I rested. And from then on, I didn't have another strong contraction and they were able to discharge me. So um, I had an appointment later that week, just a couple days later. So I'm not 33 weeks exactly right now. This hospital stay happened the day before I turned 33 weeks pregnant. So I'm including it in this update because it hadn't yet happened when I was filming my 32 week update, if that makes sense. And then I wanted to wait until I had my follow-up appointment with my doctor to be able to give you guys sort of a, this is what's going on, update. <laughs> so um, a couple days later, I had a follow-up appointment with my doctor. We checked everything. Um, oh, I should mention that when I was in the hospital, they checked my cervix twice. When I First when I got there and then when I left. And I was like at a one and a half or a two is what the nurse said, which they said that's not much different from the first cervical check I got at the beginning of my pregnancy with this doctor. I've already given birth before, so things sort of have a different size measurement because that whole the cervix area has been stretched out a baby's head has gone through it two baby's heads actually because they were both crowning at one point anyway um so um i got my cervix checked again at my follow-up appointment and it, there was no change to it and there's no thinning effacement uh, softening it seems to be what a 33 week cervix should be so that's great that makes me feel really good. And then upon seeing that 
in conjunction with these contractions that I do continue to have, my doctor came to the conclusion that I'm in what's called prodromal labor. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because that is exactly what I experienced in my last pregnancy. And they thought it was a twins thing because, and a first pregnancy thing. It's much more common in your first pregnancy, in a twins pregnancy. This is what my doctor was telling me. Um, your uterus is stretched, it's irritable, it's having constant contractions. Though There's two babies in there kicking on all sides. It's just craziness going on in there. And so you can have these very consistent contractions going on. Um, and it started in week 33 for me in my last pregnancy, started in week 33 for me in this pregnancy. And then a couple days later, I talked to my sister and she's like, yeah, do you remember what I went through? 33 weeks pregnant, I started having contractions every 10 minutes until the day I gave birth. And she delivered on her actual due date. She went into labor naturally and delivered on her due date, which makes me feel really good because it's obvious that these contractions are not progressing my cervix to the point where I'm in actual like active labor. They are uncomfortable. They're not nearly as painful as real labor contractions, but they're not comfortable. They're exhausting in fact. And when I go through a time, especially in the evening where I'm sitting there with these contractions going on, it's miserable. It's, it's miserable. And then having to take care of very rambunctious two and a half year old twins, it just makes this whole situation feel very insurmountable. And I'm 33 weeks pregnant. That means I have a little over six weeks left until my due date. And that feels so daunting to me because again, these contractions are not fun and they're exhausting and they happen a lot at night. So I'm losing sleep and ah, it's just hard, but it's just one of those things. Like it is one of those things and I don't have fear. Like I'm not concerned for the baby. I'm not concerned for me. I don't think I'm going to go into early labor. Like, let, let me just say, I don't think I'm gonna deliver early. Um, you know, obviously laying on a hospital bed with monitors and having contractions every five minutes, there was definitely concern. But after having this follow-up appointment and seeing that, yes, my cervix has not progressed at all and I am still having these contractions, but it falls into this prodromal labor category as far as symptoms go and as far as my history goes and to have a sister who's gone through the same thing just kind of confirms that this might be sort of a genetic thing like something that we just have to go through in our pregnancies well i have been rambling on a lot that i'm looking at the timer on my camera and it's like oh i've been talking for a half an hour but i hope that clues you in a little bit more to what has been going on thank you guys so much for your prayers and your kind comments this video is coming out a week after the vlog came out the vlogs are much more current to the actual day that it was shot versus my pregnancy updates on purpose i keep them a week late to give me time to shoot and edit and upload them and all of that um, i've done that the whole time so um, we've had a lot of comments, very, very kind, supportive, wonderful comments. I know you guys are praying for me and for baby girl and for our family as a whole. And I have a huge support system. My family's nearby. I have awesome friends. I have an amazing husband and yes, he works. And yes, he got stuck in Seattle when I was in the hospital in labor and delivery. Um, you can hear about that whole situation in the vlog that went up last week, but I have wonderful support around me and I am just so, so thankful for that. So the prayer right now is that baby holds on, my body stays strong, that I'm able to get through the next six weeks. I am hoping to make it to my due date. That is my goal. I do not want to go into early labor, just like I was talking about in my last video, which is so ironic because I had no idea that in a few days I would end up in labor and delivery. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, would you please give it a thumbs up? And if you are 33 weeks pregnant or you've experienced prodromal labor, would you let me know in the comments what your experience has been like? It's always nice to be able to connect with other people who have have shared similar things and actually very dissimilar things. I know everyone has a very different experience in their pregnancies and I would love
love to hear what yours has been like. Be sure you're subscribed to this channel and you have the channel notifications turned on and I will see you in next week's update. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later. Oh, I got you, there's no reason